Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday, and today is a pretty big day on the NFL calendar. Today is a day of great significance to a lot of teams, and this year I think it's going to be maybe a couple more teams than usual that care about this. It's Franchise Tag Day, or much less common, Transition Tag Day. So, what is this? So, later today, about four hours from the upload of this video, so 1 o'clock Pacific, 4 o'clock Eastern, the franchise window opens, and teams will be able to designate a player as a franchise tag player or a transition tag player. And they have approximately two weeks to do so. The window closes on March 7th. So basically teams get two weeks to decide whether or not they're going to franchise tag or transition tag, I guess, any particular player. And then a few days after the fran franchise tag period, we get free agency. So this is going to be an important period for a lot of teams. And I do believe the Seahawks are involved. Basically, every team, every season gets access to a tag. And I'm just going to use franchise tag from here on out because the transition tag is very rare these days. I can't remember the last time I've seen it other than Steve Hutchinson. But um, the franchise tag, it's basically a one-year tender for a particular player. You get one to use per season that locks the player into your team and takes away their ability to sign with or negotiate with other teams so if you have a player who you believe is really good but that player is not agreeing to a contract extension with your team seems like they want to go somewhere else and you, you can't come to a contract agreement for a long-term deal you designate them as your franchise tag player and that player is now handcuffed to you until such a time as either you come to an agreement or you trade now, the players don't really like the franchise tag, and the teams have a bit of a love-hate relationship with it. They love, obviously, that it allows them some power over their top free agents, but they also hate it because if a player actually plays on the tag, the contract is fully guaranteed and cannot be backloaded. So you're working heavily heavily at a disadvantage that you have a massive contract on a guy and you can't backload it. When I say massive, what do I mean? Well, let's take a look at the uh, tags. Let's uh, zoom in here a little bit just so you guys can see. 2023 franchise and transition tenders. Depends on the position, but basically the amount of the tender is equal to an average of the top five highest paid players at the position. So for a quarterback, if you put the franchise tag on a quarterback, it is a one-year, approximately $32.4 million contract. Fully guaranteed, cannot be backloaded into future years. You're just all on the hook that one year. For a linebacker, it would be one year, 20.9, almost 21. Wide receiver, 19.7. So on and so on, all the way down to a running back is $10 million. And a special team player is 5.4 million. So this gets expensive. And yes, I know some people are going to say, well, you know, $32.4 million for a quarterback for one year. There are quarterbacks that get over 50 million now a year. That seems really good. It is until you remember that you can't backload it. So the franchise tag is kind of a last resort for teams that really don't want to lose an asset. What is far more likely is that the team will use the franchise tag to buy themselves more time to negotiate a deal or failing that, negotiate a trade with another team so they don't lose the player for nothing. And I think you're going to see quite a few tags come out this offseason. Um, obviously, the Seahawks, they have one guy they could tag, but I do think it's very likely we tag him, Geno Smith. I think you're going to see the tag used on Lamar Jackson, you might see it on Daniel Jones or Saquon Barkley, one of the two. Deron Payne, I think, is a chief candidate to be franchise tagged. Um, I think that there's a chance that you see the Eagles use it on somebody like a Hargrave if they really don't want to lose him. Um, 
There are Orlando Brown Jr. is another one from Kansas City. I think that it's very likely the tag comes out to be used on him. Um, there, there are several other guys out there as well that don't even occur to me because I'm not a fan of those teams. But I think you're going to see a good number of franchise tags be handed out. In some cases, it will be to facilitate negotiations for a long-term deal because the franchise tag is leverage. Players do not want to play on a one-year deal when they're superstars. If a player is a superstar, he wants long-term guarantees. He does not want to think that, oh, if I tear my Achilles, I might not make any more money in this league, and I threw away maybe $100 million because I was franchise tagged. So it's a way to get a player to reduce the amount that they're asking for. It's a way to basically threaten them with um, no long-term security, and it does get players to bend a little bit on their asking price. So, I do expect the Seahawks to use their franchise tag this offseason on Geno Smith. He's really the only guy you could do it on. You could have done it with Jason Myers, but obviously there's no need to now. And you're certainly not going to do it with Rashad Penny. You're not going to do it with Marquise Goodwin or Cody Barton. That's, that's all off the table. It's only Geno Smith. And look, Geno Smith does not want to play on the franchise tag. I mean, nobody really does, but Geno Smith is thinking about it like, what if I don't play as well this year? What if I don't make the Pro Bowl? What if I revert back to what I was? Which is at least possible. Even though I don't think it'll happen, it's at least possible. So therefore, I really don't want to be playing with no long-term security. I don't want to be playing on this tag. So the tag is going to probably get him to come down a little bit in his asking price. But I'm not sure how the tag ends up getting used. Do we use it? To negotiate the long-term deal with Gino, or do we use it to trade him? And that is another way the franchise tag can be used. Traditionally, if a player has been franchise tagged, another team can come in and take that player, but they have to offer them a contract bigger than the franchise tag, and they have to give the team that placed the tag on the player two first-round picks. Well, very rare that a team is willing to give up two first-round picks for most players. It happens, but it usually doesn't happen to a guy who gets franchise tagged. So what will happen is that two the two teams will negotiate a lesser trade. An example from when I was much younger, I remember Jonathan Abraham, an elite pass rusher on the New York Jets, was franchise tagged one offseason. The Falcons wanted him, and the Falcons didn't want to give up two first-round picks, so they arranged a trade where they got, gave up one first-round pick, and the Jets got that one pick, and they were good with it. They said, okay, let's sign off on the trade. Let's send Jonathan Abraham to Atlanta, and then he signed his contract extension there. I do think Seattle might get involved on the other side of the franchise tag question as well. Maybe we trade for a tagged Deron Payne, and that might involve a first-round pick of our own because he's so young and so good and coming off such a good season, but don't rule it out. So, yeah, I expect the franchise tag to become an interesting topic of discussion for the Seahawks in the coming couple of weeks. The window opens in four hours and it closes in about two weeks. So I expect the Seahawks to use the tag and I expect them to at least be involved in trading for a player who is tagged. At least one of the two, though. So let me know what you guys think about all this. I will see you guys soon. Go Hawks. And, hey... Maybe this is something that motivates a player like a Geno Smith to get a deal done faster. That's always possible. So that would be good news too. See you guys soon.